Good morning, everyone, and welcome to FIBA Oceania's third and final 3x3 refereeing webinar. We're lucky again to have Vanessa Devlin here with us, um, who will take us through this uh, presentation today. Um, we, everyone will have access to the PowerPoint and the presentation and the recording um, at the end of the day. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please send them through the chat. Um, if you can send them through to me, uh, Vanessa will be able to go through that uh, with us at the end of the presentation. So thank you again, everyone, for participating. It's good to see so many faces here and uh, we look forward to your presentation, Vanessa. Great. Uh, thanks, Annie. Uh, good morning, everyone, again. I uh, hope everyone is keeping well. So, so far we have gone through the first two modules, uh, which has been rules and interpretations and fair selection and physicality. I hope everyone has enjoyed the first two and has got a lot of information regarding 3x3 and hopefully it won't be too long um, that we can actually start applying these on court. So there were some requests if we could do a session on mechanics um, today. So thank you for all of those who were keen and able to participate um, today. So when it comes to mechanics, there, one thing we've got to keep in mind, there are thousands of situations that can happen on court. So we use our mechanics and areas of responsibilities um, to make sure that every player and situation is being officiated on court. As a team, we need to make sure we avoid having, trying to have two sets of um, eyes on the ball at all times. Uh, we can't afford to have both referees offici officiating the same situation and leaving two players on their own. This is where missed fouls happen, um, cheap shots happen, and games can get out of control. So from the start to the end of the game, we need to make sure we hustle to get into the right positions to make the right call. Even if we don't blow, blow our whistles, we at least need to have all the information on what has happened. For an example, if we get questioned by a player as to why a foul wasn't called, we need to make sure we can explain what we saw and how we came to the decision we've made. Remember that mechanics are just a guideline. And in the end, we need to get to the right spot to make the right call. All right, so as you can see, our core is split up in uh, four, four sections. Uh, so the green is mostly, and I say mostly because we can call outside of our area. So the green is mostly officiated uh, by the trail referee. The blue area is mostly refereed by the lead. And the red area is most common area on core that either referee can officiate. This will depend, of course, where the players and the ball are. Like I said before, this is only a guideline. And on the odd time, we may need to officiate outside of these areas. So trails, duties and responsibilities are as followed. So we need to try and stay inside the court as much as possible, unless the play is close to the sideline. If it's close to the sideline or the ball is actually close to you, you can step back, okay, so you can get a better angle, okay? If it means stepping outside the court, that's fine. We need to position ourselves opposite the side of the score table. This is so we can uh, still have communication with the um, score table, even if the game's going, and we can also see both the shot clock and the uh, scoreboard. Trial officiates the check ball situation that we went through earlier uh, in the month. Uh, they are in control of both the game and the shot clock, as I said, making sure that fouls and points are going on properly. And they also signal one and two points uh, to the uh, score table. So lead uh, responsibilities is, um, so they position themselves on the base side, once again, outside of the court. They keep their torso towards the front of the rim at a 45 degree angle, and they proactively adjust to, main, uh, to position to maintain uh, the open angle. We've got to make sure that we're not flat on the baseline. So if our um, body is flat towards the baseline, it's very hard to officiate a lot of situations. As the trail referee as well, we can uh, control the game clock. Both referees, it's very important that we can uh, control that game clock. 
So we've got our uh, foul shot mechanics here. Okay, so it's very similar to five on five, but with three on three, uh, three X three. So the trail referee positions herself uh, near the two point arc. Uh, we need to make sure that we have vision on all players. Um, and we've got to make sure that the shooter is in the correct position, not stepping over the line, as well as the other players, making sure they're in the right positions, okay? And nobody is not where they're not supposed to. The lead uh, foul shot mechanics. Um, so lead is the one that administers the ball to the shooter. And once again, just like trail, make sure all players are positioned in their correct spots um, and also that they're not stepping over the lines or anything like that, or even going in early uh, when the shot is released. Just keep in mind that players do not have to occupy the spots. If, as you can see with um, B1 and A3, they've chosen to um, go behind the uh, two point arc, that's fine. If nobody wants to line up, that's fine. All right, so we're gonna go into some game situations. Now, like I've said before, there are a thousand situations. So these are just a, a few that are very basic and very common throughout the game. So as you can see, the ball is in uh, area, area two, okay? So this would be trials primary situation, okay? So they would definitely have eyes on the ball here. Trail also has to have a uh, vision on uh, players A and 2, okay? So this is, uh, as you can see, trail has got into a 45 degree angle and they have to have eyes on both players on ball. Leeds primary at the moment is um, on players A3 and B3. This is, um, you know, officiating any holding or anything like that. Lead would not switch onto the ball until there is sorry, until there is probably a left hand drive onto A1 going towards a basket, okay? Once A1 goes towards a basket, the lead will then switch on, okay, to see if there's any uh, bowels um, or travels or any violations. Uh, another situation that happens quite often, okay, this is where lead actually has uh, two sets of players. So the ball is in probably the shared area. Um, A2 has the ball. This is where Trail's primary uh, call would be, okay? But once again, they've opened their vision out to make sure they have vision on A1 and B1 as well. Leeds primary will be A3, okay, and A1 and B1, okay? They are a leader officiating the post play in A1 and B1 and any screen situations probably from B3 and A3. It's very important that especially the lead in this situation has vision on A1, A1, B1, B3, A3, okay? And not looking straight at the ball. If lead looks at the ball, okay, we've got probably these players here that are not being refereed. Okay, so Another situation, once again, so this is one with um, A3 um, and B3, A3's got the ball. So this is Leeds primary now, okay? They are focused on the ball. And Trey was on the other two sets of players. Now, what's more than likely gonna happen here is there's gonna be a down screen, okay, or off ball situation. Once again, if Trey ends up looking at the ball, we've got four, four players, okay, that we're not referring. So I've got a video here. This is similar uh, to what I'm uh, talking about. It is slowed down so we can go through it. Okay, so as you can see, the blue player's got the ball. They've taken the beyond two point eight. This is Leeds primary at the moment. This is their nearest matchup and they've got no other um, players to officiate. The other four players are on the other side of the court, which trail will have vision on both. Okay, so we'll go through another situation again here. So we've got uh, A1 and B1 with the ball, okay, and A2 and B2. Okay, this is where lead has to make sure they extend their vision and have view on both players because they are not only referring A1 and B1, they're also referring A2 and B2. Trail is there definitely to help out, 
okay, if uh, something is to happen with A2 and B2, but lead needs to make sure they have both sets of these players covered. Okay, once again, trial has their two players to officiate because as you know, in 3x3, there can be a lot of holding, a lot of grabbing, um, and anything can happen. As soon as you leave two players by themselves, this is where stuff starts to happen. This time the ball has actually gone into the post uh, with A3 and B3. Okay, so this is Leeds primary situation. Okay, and they've also got vision on A1 and B1. This is where trail needs to step across uh, closer to split line. So they can actually now have vision on A2 and B2 and also help out with A1 and B1, okay? If A3 decides to go uh, right towards the basket and starts going to the opposite side, this is where trail would then switch on and help out with any violations and fouls. This is a very common situation um, that happens in a game where we overload one side of the court. So in this situation, instead of trial trying to referee six players on the court, this is where lead actually has to now move across to referee the post play in A3 and B3. So trail has the ball here. They also have vision on the top two plays in area two. And lead will have um, the post play in A3 and B3. So vision is a lot easier to understand. I've got a clip here that shows the exact same uh, situation of what we've just gone through. So as you can see, trail has got uh, the ball and there is a post situation here that there is no way, trail may see it, but trail has four other players to referee. The only thing I would probably suggest is lead to come over more. As you can see, you can't even see lead in the, um, in the actual clip. So if they came over more, then they would definitely be, uh, they'll be able to see that a lot clearer but as you can see on the video, the uh, white team player has his arm right across, okay? So as you can see, Trail would have the ball here. There's three players in front of him. There's no way he's probably gonna see that call, All right? So it's a good help out call by Lee. We'll just go through it one more time, live. That's a good get. Player even likes it, applauds him, which is very rare. All right, so I'm gonna probably set, uh, show you guys probably about another four clips now. Um, these are just certain situations that that can happen to a game. And this is also a situation where we need to actually switch on and off um, of players from between trail and lead. So, Let's just run through the clip first. I'll run through it and then um, we'll talk about it. Okay, so as you can see, um, yellow team has the ball and this is where lead has switched onto it, which is great. So trail at the moment, I would probably still take another step over, probably about here, so they can referee not only these two players here underneath the basket, but help out with here. All right, so Lee's got the ball, which is great. But as you can see, when the ball gets passed up, sorry, I pressed the wrong button. When the ball gets passed um, to 15, all right, this is where lead needs to actually switch off, okay? And trail now needs to become, this is their primary area, okay? Because lead's now going to need to officiate any action that has happened in area four, all right? So trail now has the ball and lead now switches on to the other four 
to referee that screen, screening situation. Okay, so it's very similar to the last situation. Lead has the ball. Okay, but now this is where it's changed. So lead needs to stay on ball because as you can see, there is a player here that trail needs to officiate. So trail needs to officiate that situation here and leads only match up is that one-on-one -on -one situation. So we'll have a look at that one again. So lead has ball. Trail has vision on both his four players. Now Trail has that screening situation and Lead has the one-on-one -on -one situation towards the basket. This is a clip where it will show um, where the correct call should actually be made from. So blue player shoots, white player makes contact on the right side of the hip of the blue player. Foul is called, which is great because we need to protect those outside shooters. But as you can see, it actually came from lead. So it's good that leads actually helped out with that. But this is a call that is probably going to be better coming from trail. So if we just go look at it again and we'll stop it at certain situations. Okay, so this is where the contact's made. As you can see, lead has vision on it, but there's also four players low in area four that need officiating. So if lead are officiating those four, Okay, this is where trail needs to come across and referee this situation. Okay, as you can see, lead is very wide and that's probably why they didn't call the foul. All right, so if they had come across, they would have seen come a bit higher and they would have seen that push on the hip. But remember, if we need to help out our teammates, that's fine. So call has come from lead, it's the correct call. So it needs to be made. Okay, so the last video I got, I got is um, one that happens quite often. And this is an example of where we need to extend our coverage and actually make a call outside of our area. So we've got our guidelines. Remember, they're guidelines. So as you can see, all this situation is happening in trails sort of area, right? This is where if lead doesn't help out, okay, lead's not officiating anything because they've got no players. So this is where lead's got to extend their vision, okay, and help out. So as you can see, white player has the ball and there is holding out the top of the key. In this situation, lead needs to help out refereeing with on ball. Trail would be refereeing these two players at the start, which is a clear foul, okay? I can't tell you what lead's thinking at the moment, but I would assume they are also refereeing the screen that is about to happen. Okay, so if lead actually furthers their vision, they would be able to help out on ball. They could also um, help out with the screen now, okay? So we'll have another look at that again. This was actually a very physical game. So as you can see, there's a, a lot of holding, a lot of fouls. Um, so lead needs to come across and help out officiate that. So lastly, we need to remember that we are a team on court. We help each other out 
And if there is a call that needs to be called for the good of the game, we need to make it. We can't use the excuse, it's not my call, it's not my area, so I didn't blow my whistle, okay? If you see contact, and even if it's not your matchup or it's your area, you need to make that call for the good of the game. But you must have all the information. And I say you must have all the information because we don't want to guess. You may see something out of the corner of, the, of your eye, a player's hit the deck, may look like a foul, but if you don't have all the information, okay, you can't blow your whistle. Have trust in your partner as well. Maybe he has seen the whole situation from, from start to finish and he's actually chosen not to make that call. But if you actually see it and you're 100% convinced that's a foul, blow your whistle, help your partner out. Your partner may have been straight lined. They may have been looking at another situation that they haven't made the call, okay? Remember, we are a team. So thank you again for attending today. Um, I hope you've got a lot of information out of today's session. Um, like I said, look, there's a lot to think about. There's a lot of situations, but this is just the guidelines and the basics of what we need to officiate and uh, where we need to move to. So hopefully we can get back on court soon and uh, actually apply this. Thanks, Vanessa. Um, we've had some questions come through, some very I'm good sure questions. I'm sure there would be. Yeah, so the first one, um, switching on and switching off. Can you just explain that a little bit, uh, what you mean by that? Okay, so switching on and switching off. So it's in other words, is checking in and checking out. So once the player um, has actually moved into the uh, other referee's area, Okay, this is where the new referee has to actually check into the ball. All right, and the other referee has to leave it, leave it up to the other referee, and then referee the other two to four players that are on court. If they continue to follow the ball, okay, this is where other four players are going to go missing. All right, and nobody's going to referee them. Okay, you've got to have trust that your other referee partner is then going to take on that responsibility on ball and you have to leave it and then focus on another area. Um, in situations that the play is overloaded on one side, um, on the end line away from the lead, how far um, should the lead go over to help? Okay, so there's no rule. There's no rule to say you have to go to a certain spot. Referee, probably the... The best spot is probably the split line. You may not want to go over too far, but if you have to go over split line to referee and get a better position, do it. Okay, don't think there's any magic spot like, oh, I can't go any further. If you have to take a couple of steps over to referee that situation, do it. Great, thank you. Um, and last question. Oh, actually, no, we've got a couple more. Um, <laughs> Refs and fouls in 3x3, do they allow more physicality of the fouls um, but are still monitored as, like, so I think the question is uh, the difference between 5-on-5 five five and 3x3 and what calls um, are actually uh, called in 3x3 and the difference? Uh, yep, so that was probably uh, more to the, the last module that we had in uh, physicality. So probably the... Um, uh, so how am I going to explain? So probably we, we definitely let a lot more go. Um, we let uh, a bit more of the uh, bumps and we more referee of what the offence um, disadvantages come. So a lot of the offence are used to the contact. So offence will cause a lot of that contact. Um, it, it's a bit hard to explain without the clips that I've got. Yeah, no. Um, and that and that's fine, Vanessa. Um, I'll, I'll share the last uh, module uh, with this, uh, with Niasi from Tonga. Um, yeah, so um, Niasi, we will share with you the last presentation, um, which also is relevant um, to the next question you've asked about unsportsman, um, unsportsmanship technical fouls. Yep. Um, that's also in that module as well. So we will share that with uh, you again. Um, so we don't have any more questions. Uh, what I will do for everyone is I will send through all the modules, the presentations, the recordings, um, so that you all have them 
Um, we appreciate uh, your time. Uh, it, it's great to see so many on, online dur during this challenging time and, and still trying to stay engaged. Uh, we hope that you can use these resources uh, to help others um, in your countries. Uh, Vanessa, is there anything else you would like to say to our uh, 3x3 referees here today? Um, I, I just hope that you guys have got a lot out of these last three presentations. Um, I was really happy to hear that we even wanted a mechanics one, which was really good. Um, something that I know that I haven't actually done online before, uh, so it's been new to me as well. Uh, I'm really keen for three on three. I hope you guys are too. Uh, I just hope we can get back on court soon because it's very frustrating staying in uh, side doors. Um, so hopefully, yeah, we can get out there soon and um, yeah, have some fun out there. Great, thanks Vanessa. Um, I did get a question, are there any more 3X3 sessions in May? Unfortunately, we don't have anything organised at the moment, but if you feel like there, there is something that you still need to learn about, please send an email to me. Um, I'm not sure how long uh, we're all going to be in this situation. Um, uh, Chuen Leong, uh, no, we, uh, we will have some five on five referee webinars in May and June. Uh, so we will send out um, that information to everyone. So again, thank you on behalf of FIBA Oceania, on behalf of Vanessa, thank you everyone for joining us today. And we look forward to seeing you all, all online uh, very soon. Take care and stay safe. Bye-bye. Thanks, Annie.